Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jenny. Um, thank you very much. And thanks for the um, uh, Rare Books Collections Department in the Fisher Library to organize this event. Um, um, and I am currently studying Master of Art Curating in the Sydney Uni. And it's my great honor today to be here and share with you my thoughts on four rare books um, about 19th century China. Uh, because I'm still a student, so I'm very happy and eager to gain your feedbacks and comments. Yeah, um, actually, this is one of my uh, assignments for contemporary curating unit in my degree. Dr. Katriana Moore from the Art History Department gave me a lot of advice in this research. So I would like to acknowledge uh, her support here. Okay. Thomas Allen was born in 1804, and he was a well-known British illustrator for travel books. Also, he is a founding member of the Royal Institute of the British Architects. So he, is an, he was an illustrator and also an architect at the same time. So he studied at the Royal Academy in London. He was inspired by the Orientalist movement of his time, and he was carried away by the magical atmosphere of the East. So from the 1820s onwards, Alan traveled extensively to UK and also the mainland Europe. In 1834, he produced hundreds of drawings during his journey to Turkey, Syria, and also Palestine. However, there has been no concrete evidence showing that Alan had been to China before. Um, so his Chinese illustration may be based on the works of other artists, especially Orientalist artists in the 19th century. Allen became one of the most renowned Orientalist artists of his time, and he is represented in the collection of the Tate Gallery in Britain, the Royal Academy, Art, the Royal Academy of Art in London, and also in the National Library of Australia. So Allen illustrates um, the first books, um, it's called um, Constantinople and the Scenery of the Seven Churches of Asian Minor in 1838. So the full volumes can also be found in the official library of these um, illustration books. After that, China Illustrated was published by the Fisher Sun and Corporation in 1845 in London. And it also has another title called China in a series of views displaying the scenery, architecture, and social habits of that Asian empire. There are 75 still engravings depict Chinese social habits, scenery, and architecture drawn by Thomas Allen. Orientalism shaped how Allen depicted about things and what he understood about the Chinese society. So here, these are the four volumes of China Illustrated, the cover. Um, you can see um, peasant. Yeah, that is very typical in um, Asian China, the peasant's life. Before going into the artworks, I will briefly introduce the concept of Orientalism. So what is Orientalism? Orientalism is a term used by art historians and cultural studies scholars for the imitation or depiction of the aspects in Middle Eastern, South Asian, or East Asian cultures. Edward Said, here, he drew the concept of Orientalism into the center of contention with his book, Orientalism, published in 1878. Edward Said um, graduated from the Harvard University and he is a very famous cultural critic, and he is the founder of the post-colonial theory in the cultural studies view. According to Sayi, Orientalism is about a style of thought based on a distinction made between the Occident, us, and the Orient, them. It illustrates it 
assumed、um, there is the existence of two kinds of people, the Orient and the Occident. So, in which the characteristic of Orientals serve to reinforce the Occidental identity and notions of superiority. This ideological、um, dichotomy. Demonstrate a power relation which、um, the Occidental demonstrate、uh, dominate. Sorry, restructured and also has authority over the Orient culture through scholarship, art, and also government. There are some adjectives here, usually used by、um, Oriental scholars to reinforce the us and them dichotomy. Dichotomy. And strengthen the power relationship between the East and the West. So after Edward Said, it was Professor、um, Linda Nochlin from America who applied the theories of Orientalism into the study of art history,、uh, specifically in her、uh, profound paper. The Imaginary Orient, published in eighteen、uh, in nineteen eighty three, she argued there was a particular power structure in which the Orientalist works came into being. You might have heard of、uh, Professor Nochlin; she's very famous.、Uh, she was also an expert in feminist art.、Uh, she asked a profound question about why have there been no great women artists in the Um, 1971. So she is an expert in、uh, feminist art history and also Orientalism. So Professor Nochlin、uh, focused primarily on the 19th century French Orientalist painter、uh, Jean Lyon.、Uh, he completely conceived, as you can see. This is quite famous、uh, painting of Orientalism art.、Um, there is a snake charmer in the middle, but the artist completely conceived of this image. The painting was the artist's imagination, which remarkably look realistic. So, as you can see, a nude young boy is holding a snake. While a man next to him is playing flute, a group of men of varying ages watch the young boy. Also about the room, so look at the room. The room features beautiful、um, Arabic tiles in great detail, and a stone floor. So the artist create,、uh, created a sense of verisimilitude. It means like in great details. It looks realistic, very real, very,、um, very similitude.、Um, the painting appears to be documentary evidence of life in the Ottoman court. So Professor Nochlin points out that when the Western viewers in the 19th century gazed over this painting, so they tended to imagine. The Eastern society as being lazy, childlike, sometimes cruel, to establish the power over the Eastern people. Also, Orientalist painter like to depict women and so、uh, odalisk, the women slave. Professor Nochlin thought the painting like this depicting women. Of、um, North Africa, in fact, is a Westerners' vision of a mysterious world which accentuated exoticism and otherness. So, in brief, Orientalist、uh, painting word imagination of the Orientalist artists, and when the in, in when the Western viewers. Gaze over the paintings. They tended to imagine the Oriental world as superstitious, cruel, or lazy, or childlike, etc.、Um, Orientalist painters like to create a sense of verisimilitude. The great detail look realistic, 
So they also like to depict women's uh, boudoir to accentuate exoticism and also otherness. So in Orientalism, um, in the painter's eye, Oriental society was a place of backwardness, lawlessness, and barbarism. It's a representation of a Western colonial ideology in the 19th century. Okay, now let's look at our rare books. Look at Alum's um, engravings. Look at this picture. What did you see? Can you see the, um, there are two people here? What are they playing? Snake? Yes. So in Alum's engravings, he depicted um, itinerant doctors in China as another kind of snake charmers. So Alan probably made up this scene by looking at other Orientalist painting of his time because as I mentioned before, there is no concrete evidence uh, proving that Alan had been to China in the 19th century. And also, when you look at this picture, can you see the great details of the Chinese traditional architecture? Like at the back, um, the archway, the eave, the roof beams, especially this part, and here, in great details. And also this one, um, the title is called First Entrance Gate of the Temple of Confucius. So also in great details, a sense of uh, verisimilitude. And Alan liked to depict religion places. And you can see there is a person burning something, maybe paper offering or sacrifice, sacrifice or something. And people may be asking fate here. So in depict by depicting the religious um, places, um, it can reinforce the Oriental lifestyle as being different or sometimes superstitious. And also this one, the Chinese opium smokers. Um, it's very interesting because look at the time, it's 1848. And the first opium war in China is from 1839 to 1842. It's actually right after the first opium war. But in Alan's books, he rarely depict about the war scenes. I, I, look, uh, I read through all the four volumes very small portion, two or three, uh, depict about a war, but most of them are Chinese social habits. And like this, the opium uh, smokers. So um, to primarily portray the violence of the Chinese towards each other and not between the West and the East. This picture really surprised me because um, the title was uh, uh, Pavilion and Gardens of a Mandarin. Mandarin was a ruling class in the Qing Dynasty uh, near Beijing. And well, the reason why I felt surprised is because I think I have been to Beijing for several times. I had never seen um, a big palace like this. It is very luxurious. And I think um, through the depiction of the extravagant life of the Manchu, um, Thomas Allen might want to um, show the lifestyles of the ruling class of being 
lazy or showing the corrupt corruption or social stratifications of Chinese society. And also, he used the um, uh, verism, sorry, verisimilitude techniques here, like also in great details. A look at um, furniture, and also have a small pond here. It's, it, it's very, when I look at the book, it's actually very detailed. And this is a Manchu family, like uh, official, maybe high ranking, and then his wife. And this one, um, a devotee consulting the stakes of fate. It really, sorry, it really gave me, um, oh, sorry, a sense of like Chinese society at that time was a bit um, superstitious or compared to Western culture, maybe he think is a bit special, differentiated. And look at here is um, like burning the incense and also the idol worship here. That is the statue of some god or goddess. Um, this one is about some men fighting snails. It reminds me of the cock fight in Indonesia when I study um, social history, the so-called history from below, uh, to depict this um, cock fight, the fighting snail. But I don't think this is a snail. I think this looks like birds. But the actual title in the book is snail. This is my favorite. Um, ladies of uh, Mandarin families at cards. Um, as I mentioned, Orientalist painters like to depict women's boudoirs or orderless life. So in Thomas Allen's case, he depicted the Chinese boudoir in great detail, um, stressing, stressing a rigid social hierarchy and also evoked a sense of isolation of Chinese women who always um, attached their fate to men. So they don't need to go to work, they just stay at home and play card. And they have maybe a women's slave to take care of their children. And here is um, worship, ancestor worship or idol worship. And also the architecture is in great detail to give you a sense like it's like a documentary, it's real. But actually, Alam has never been to China before. So why he doing that is the main concern behind. This one is about a lady, uh, her bed chamber. She's smoking, which is um, is only for high-ranking lady, I think, at that time. And also, um, look at he, her bed. Very uh, carefully carving here, depict in great detail the furniture. I think um, Thomas Allen's painting um, echo with Linda Nocklin's argument in her research paper of the uh, Imaginary Orient. The first one, Imagination of Orientalist Artists, it, it is an imagination because uh, through my research, there is no concrete evidence of um, Thomas Allen had been to China before. So it's his own imagination, although he might uh, learn from other artists in the 19th century, but mainly is through imagination. And then the second one, he liked to depict the scenes of leisure and religious worship. To um, give you a, give the Western viewers a sense of um, 
the Orientalist being superstitious, childlike, and cruel. Remember the uh, the snail fight, and also the opium smoker, the um, consulting the fate, etc. Realistic and a sense of uh, verisimilitude. Yeah, I mentioned it a lot of times. Eroticism and women's borders. Yeah, to depict women's life. It's absolutely imagination because um, men cannot go to women's boudoirs at that period in the 19th century. They are not allowed to go in. So um, he depicts that to accentuate exoticism and also ardeness, I think. All in all, like uh, Linda Nochlin's argument, is a representation of Western colonial ideology in the 19th century. And there is a particular power structure in which these works came into being. And after my research, I did a little bit of reflections and I raised some questions to myself. How does one represent others' culture? Like Thomas Allen is depicting and kind of responding Re representing the Chinese culture in the 19th century when he published these books to his audience. And the second one is the notion of being a distinct culture, or more broadly, a religion or a civilization useful, or does it inevitably get involved in either self-congratulations or aggression? And how to avoid this? Maybe I think the main strategy is to avoid categorization or generalization of what this culture belongs to. Like, for example, I went to the Art Gallery of New South Wales in this morning for, um, for my uh, own course, and I met the Asian um, art curator. And he mentioned that sometimes the Asian artists, they won't they don't like to be categorized as Asian artists. They just want to be called a contemporary artist. So the cultural identity here is a real consideration, I think, in art. And also about history. So is history about human experience? If it is, so what attitude we should take when we consider other people's experience? That is my own reflections. Um, because there are 75 engravings in total, so I cannot put um, all the engravings in just two movable cases. So I make it online. So I scan most of the engravings online. So you can scan the QR code here if you want to see more of his work. Or you can go to the website here. And one more thing is about the ebook. I find this website very useful because, um, yeah, let me open this. Sorry. So, this website, uh, when I do my assignments, I always use. Um, is an American online database. So here, if you type Thomas Allen's, and you can see the full version of the books. So you can read the books online. It's very helpful. And also other uh, materials are available here. It's called archive.org. OK. That's the end of my sharing, and I'm eager for your feedbacks and comments. Do you have any questions? I'm wondering if in your research for this talk, if you came across any um, Eastern artists working during this time who were turning their gaze back the other way towards the West and depicting this civilization or the Western civilization in a similar way? Yeah, this is very interesting. It's like a Contradiction. Um, I think because of the 
because this is in 19th century, and China was pretty much closed at that time. So I think the officials seldom sent people to Western countries at that time. But I can think of an example of this is the Jesuit missionary when they came to China in the 17th century, they brought their skills to depict about China. So they, they basically brought the techniques and not about the concept, I think. The techniques, because I think Chinese people are very pragmatic. They like to learn the techniques of the Western culture. So also in painting, I think, um, as if I were um, an art student at that time, when I go to a West country, Western country, I may focus on the techniques instead of the concept, instead of the culture. Yes. I was just wondering if um, there were any paintings or drawings or I can't remember, engravings or anything, um, any artworks that Thomas Allen had created about um, like Western, like Western depictions. So like the ladies in the boudoir type of situation, but just with women where he was from. Um, because it seemed like there were some hairstyles even that you would see in, in like paintings of, I don't know, like within the Renaissance period or something like that. Um, yeah, and he just kind of cast his oriental gaze to change it into a Chinese scene. Okay, so, so your, your question is like if he, did, uh, did he depict some pictures of the Western world? Yeah, yeah. and he saw in a similar vein. Yeah, the answer uh, is yes. He, because I uh, also look at other books in Fisher Library's collections, uh, especially the rare books collection, there are, I think, five or six volumes of different kinds of artworks by Thomas Allen. And for the Western uh, uh, perspectives, he likes to depict architecture. He likes to depict church um, because he was an architect and also an illustrator. So in, I think he depicted some of the churches in Britain and we have a, a book in the Rare Books Library. I forgot the name, sorry, but I'm sure he has some works to depict his hometown or the Western world. Yeah. Thank you. I was wondering if you can tell us anything about his actual models for those representations of both Chinese people and Chinese architecture. Have you succeeded in identifying any of the any of his sources? You mean the real the real the real landscape to find a real landscape that he depict or um, are, are there books of Chinese architecture that he simply copied? Are there Chinese um, paintings on cloth or or hangings? that he, he copied to get the, the faces and the poses and, and so on? Who, who's he copying? Yeah, that's a, a, a very good question. He is copying mainly two people. The first one is called uh, Frederick White, and the second is called James Dordot. So if I search um, the, the first one, Fed, um Frederick, yeah. So this one, the pagoda, he depict. Um, Thomas Allen likes to depict pagoda. In, in I think eighty percent of his painting in that four volumes books. So he basically um, learned from um, Frederick White and also um, Captain James Stewart who had been to China real, like, actually. Right. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? 
or comments? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could you tell us a bit more about the production? Um, steel engravings would, would have been quite novel at this stage. When, when did the first steel engravings develop? Uh, when, when are they implemented? Uh, and uh, I found it interesting looking at your images that um, illustrations uh, in the 19th century usually have the name of the of the art of the image of the art of the work mm. of the artist who created mm. the prototype and and also the person who actually Engraved. did the engraving yes yeah you're you're absolutely right because and yeah th that they don't figure in any of these images oh okay sorry because of my when i scanned the image um i did not put at the, oh that is a very serious problem for me yeah i will i will be kept yeah is here drawn by t allen and here is engraved by p uh light is quite but if you uh, really, re yes. yeah, they will have the name, yeah, yeah. So, so really, the image of Asia that's the image of Asia that's being produced depends upon the original drawing, mm. uh, and which is often acknowledged in the prints. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, and so, so there are several stages in terms of how one. Is, reads these things and um, this is fascinating to see. Yeah. I, I think your advice is, is, is right. I need to put the, the artist and also the engraver like for this image as well because it's their work. Yeah, I need to acknowledge that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you.